slavery existed in New York. Did she just say slavery existed in New York? Yeah, man. Now, I know when you think of New York, you tend to think of things like the Yankees and subways and slices of pizza. But in fact, New York has an unfortunate history of a slave trade, and it was the second largest in the country at the time next to Charleston, South Carolina. I'm Derek. I'm going to keep it real with you as I take you through the Slavery in New York exhibit. Here in this space, we are uh, meeting the uh, people who existed under Dutch rulership when the area that was, uh, is today known as New York was formerly known as New Amsterdam. At that time, New Amsterdam was uh, under the rulership of uh, Director General Peter Stuyvesant. Of course, there had been other Director Generals prior to Stuyvesant, but things got to moving when Stuyvesant came on board. Peter Stuyvesant was uh, uh, one of the uh, largest slave owners in the colony. Good old Pete. Pete's legacy is left all over this city. He has Stuyvesant Town, he's got Stuyvesant High School, He's got bed -Stuy. in case you all brothers didn't know, the Stuy stands for good old Pete Stuyvesant. And Pete must have been down, I think he was probably from Brooklyn, because he had a wooden leg that had mad bling bling in it. And his leg stood out so much that the Native Americans dubbed him Peg Leg Pete. We have some statues or sculptures that have been created, these wire sculptures, to give us a sense of who these people may have been in terms of their responsibilities uh, in, as, as laborers for the Dutch West India Company. They were responsible for digging the trenches, for building the canals, for building the wall, for carrying the timber and the lumber to create houses and other types of structures for the people who lived in New Amsterdam. So I'm gonna break it down to you. Basically, the slaves should be nicknamed vertebrae because they're the backbone of this shit. They built Trinity Church, they built Wall Street, and they built the first city hall. How you like that? Hmm. The work of uh, recent scholarship that was done by Dr. Michael Blakey at Howard University when the African burial ground emerged in the early 1990s. And a ground very similar to this, archaeologists uncovered a massive graveyard. This spot was an African burial ground right here in New York City. They discovered this while they were doing some pre-construction for a federal office building. Now as a result of this discovery, Dr. Michael Blakey, who is the director of this project, now has been able to do extraordinary work at Howard University. He's been able to trace the ancestry of descendants of slaves back to specified areas in Africa. We have lots of documents to help to put the story of slavery in perspective. And so we get a sense of the types of bills of sale, the arrangements of buying and trading enslaved people. Back in the day in the 18th century, slaves were going for about 38 pounds a person which is approximately 5,000 US today. So forget that flat screen for Christmas and get yourself a Negro. The Dutch remained in possession of New Amsterdam until 1664, at which point the British uh, came over and took the uh, land from the Dutch and renamed the area New York after the Duke of York. And under the uh, rulership of the British, that's when you get a sense that slavery becomes a little bit more harsh, a little more violent. That's Master with the whip. He ain't gonna dance on my back with that shit like he Gregory Hines. I'm out of here. Peace, y'all. We discussed the resistance efforts of the, those who were enslaved. We talk about the slave revolts of 1712 and 1741, where enslaved people were very angry and band together to uh, set fires throughout the city to, in some cases, murder their uh, enslavers. Let me simplify shit for you, dog. Brothers got pissed. Back then, the revolution couldn't be televised because there wasn't no televisions. But I'd have told you what I would have done had I been there. There would have been no picking cotton. What's up now? Who, who gonna, uh, who picking what now? Uh, 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 pick up them teeth, chump. There'd have been no bailing hay. There'd have been no going up to Massa's house and doing anything. I'd have told Massa to suck my motherfucking dick. Power to the people. Slavery was involved in sugar, slavery was involved in tea, slavery was involved in coffee commodities, the clothing that people wore, and it was truly big business and on its way to becoming even bigger. Slavery would have went on to become big business here in the city. 
that the conscience of man changed at that time. So slavery no longer became slavery, but it segued into other things. You could say it exists in today's society. Athletics, entertainment, even the military. The one thing I want you to keep in mind throughout this whole piece is that slavery did exist in New York, and it prospered. So, in essence, we played a part in building this city. And if I may, quote G Money from New Jack City. You didn't build this shit by yourself. I'm Derek, I'm your reset homeboy.